It's alleged the Gupta family had an influence on who they wanted to serve on the ESCOM board and that they allegedly drafted a list of names. So those who were elected to serve in 2014 came to be known as the Gupta board. Gubane was speaking at the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture. This board is one that has been allegedly referred to as the Gupta board. Well, that was referred by Mr. Sotsi, which I find absolutely disgusting. You know, it was an open process run by the department. We had no contact or connection or telephone conversation that from any one of the Gupta people to say, we want you to be on the board. And I presume this would go as well for all my other board members. Now, to be described as a Gupta board, I think, is very, very unfortunate, particularly coming from a public figure like Mr. Zolatsos. Mr. Zolatsos himself had been accused in the press, it was the Sunday Times, publication around probably 15, 16, or 18 April. We said he had leaned on the management in the procurement sector to grant together two mining contracts, one at 400 million rands a year, another one at 500 million rands a year, one of them was Firfontaine. I can't remember exactly the other one. And one of these, of these mines didn't even have a, a proper water license from the Department of Water and Sanitation. But on top of that, at the beginning of this year, a, a coal contract worth 3.7 billion rand was set aside by the Gauteng North High Court. That was signed in Mr. Sosi's time. Brian Molefe, Koko Molefe, myself, we hardly, well, I was at ESCOM in, in December, but Molefe only came in April, so it couldn't have been him who dealt with that contract. So those are questions that Mr. Sotsi must ask. Who did favors to the Guptas? Former ESCOM board chair there, Ben Ngubane, testifying at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Mbalentle Mtetwa, SABC News reporter, joins us now for more on this. So uh, Mbali, uh, Ngubane seems uh, to have taken issue uh, with the board uh, that he served on being labeled as a Gupta board. Yes, indeed. As you've heard in the Absan that's just played, or Crisalda, he did take issue and he took serious offense uh, to have heard such utterances uh, coming from the former board chairperson. Uh, and he essentially told the commission that uh, the board that he served on uh, was appointed, uh, when it was appointed, the, the ESCOM had followed proper uh, procedures and that he did not receive a phone call from the Guptas informing him or asking him or requesting him uh, to serve on the board. So he rejected those, uh, those allegations, um, vehemently uh, rejected those allegations. As you've seen in uh, the clip, he's also accused uh, his predecessor of um, being involved in corruption himself. Uh, speaking of media reports that suggested and that alleged that he had signed off of a, on, on a number of irregular contracts, which obviously cost um, ESCOM a large amount of money uh, mm -hmm. given its financial troubles that we have all uh, become aware of. Yeah. Uh, Mbali, so uh, the former ESCOM board chair was also questioned about uh, why the power, to, power utilities es uh, executives like uh, Tidiso Madonna were suspended uh, with no formal charges uh, tell us a bit more about that. 
Uh, yes, indeed. So we've heard Zola Tsotsi uh, testifying earlier this week, talking about how he believes that these uh, executives were suspended to make way for Gupta Associates at ESCOM. And you heard also the D Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo also saying that it seemed as though uh, they were making way, uh, the family, the Gupta family essentially wanted people they could trust serving on the board and also serving as executives at ESCOM. And now we've heard that these executives did not have formal charges against them but were suspended nonetheless. We've heard yesterday, uh, yesterday's witness was a board member also saying that she had supported uh, the suspension of these executives. These executives were asked to go to were suspended uh, because ESCOM at the time was embarking on an investigation into uh, load shedding and other financial issues at ESCOM and wanted uh, four executives to be suspended yeah. while this investigation was still ongoing. Now, this investigation did not criminalize or lay charges, find any criminal charges or charges against uh, these particular uh, executives. Mm. But the board still resolved that these executives needed um, to, to, to be set aside, uh, you know, not to be there present because they feared that they would interfere in the findings of uh, the investigation uh, in his appearance and in his testimony before yeah. the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Yeah. Gubani explained that the board had wanted a credible and independent view on what was happening at yeah. ESCOM. We heard him being questioned by Deputy Chief Justice. Raymond Zondo, asking him if um, these executives could not have been of assistance to this investigation mm. and possibly um, added value to the investigation mm. and been able to inform them th about f uh, prior failures and how they felt, you know, the company could be turned around going forward. Um, Bali, uh, just finally, uh, the relationship, of course, between uh, the Gupta family and that particular board under, under shock focus uh, today. Uh, what did Ngobane have to say about his relationship with the Gupta family and uh, the uh, Gupta business uh, associate uh, Salim Issa? Well, he's, he's essentially dismissed that, you know, there was anything untoward with his relationship with uh, the Gupta family, as well as business associate Salim Issa. We've heard Salim Issa's name coming up in the State Capture Commission uh, of Inquiry, uh, State Capture Commission of Inquiry, rather. And he's actually at the center of many of the allegations of corruption at most of these SOEs. And he's essentially said that he had no business relationship with him. And he also had no business relationship with the Gupta family and that he um, met with, became familiar with uh, the Gupta family during his tenure as uh, SABC board chairperson mm -hmm. where he was involved in co conversations and meetings with the Gupta family um, over the TNA breakfast which were broadcast on the SABC platform yeah. and that's when their relationship started and he also explained to the commission that he'd also been invited to a number of engagements and a number of events that were held by uh, the Gupta family. So yeah. he's not denying that he has been to the Gupta residence or has had interactions with the Gupta uh, family. However, he's saying there was no business interactions there. Mm. Uh, just going back on the issue of executives, um, Ngubani was also questioned as to how it is that ESCOM was willing to part with 18 million rand, mm. an 18 million rand settlement to, um, for, their, for ESCOM to part ways with the three executives which had been suspended uh, if these people did essentially want to come back yeah. and work at ESCOM. And he essentially said that they wanted to find um, an amicable solution. So it just goes back, brings into question sure. the reasons and the reasoning behind why these executives were suspended and why they were later on let go. We heard earlier this week Tedesco Madonna's testimony saying, in his testimony saying that he wanted to uh, go back and work. And that's why he'd even gone as far as going to the labor court to try try and reverse this decision to suspend him yeah. as CEO at the time. But unfortunately, he got the impression that his job was no longer on the table. Mbalentli Mtetwa, thank you very much uh, indeed covering uh, the state capture uh, commission uh, for us uh, today.